You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. Trying to get the message out about Orcana, about the Revenue Virginia mine, that you know this is a quality asset, that it does have significant upside potential, that it's going to be around a very long time. It's very high grade, and with that little push that we've recently got in the price of silver, you know people have started to take a, a deeper look, I think, at what's out there for uh, silver uh, companies that could benefit from you know current situation and whatnot that we're in. So I think we're, we're starting to see. I, I believe we're starting to see another type of investor coming in more general coming into Orcana. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Mining Stock Education. I am your host, Bill Powers. Today, we're going to be getting an update from the president and CEO of Arcana Corporation. I've been receiving a number of messages about Arcana as we feature and have as a sponsor Arcana to this show. And if you are not familiar with the story, I would encourage you to go back and listen to two previous interviews that I've already conducted with Kevin this year. One was on January 7th. That was an initial overview of the value proposition that Arcana presents to the market. And the second was on March 5th at PDAC, where Kevin gave us an update and also answered some questions that had come in after the first interview. I will also put a link in the show notes to both of those interviews. If you want to look up the ticker as you listen to this, it's A. AUN on the TSXV in Toronto, the venture exchange there, or AUNFF on the OTC in New York. And I will note that the company is performing very well, especially over the last week, week and a half, and it's hitting 52 week highs as more investors are looking for quality silver plays. So, Kevin, welcome back on to Mining Stock Education. Thank you for joining me. When we spoke in, at PDAC in Toronto there in March, uh, you had said you were in the process of moving to Ure, Colorado um, to be closer to the mine and, and oversee its operations and startup. How has that uh, transition been going for you? It's uh, It's been a little bit slow, you know, given the uh, situation with COVID-19 and the restrictions uh, around all of those things. Um, Virtually all of the U.S. consulates in Canada are um, are closed and makes it very difficult to get the uh, the proper paperwork to uh, get into the United States. But uh, we, we're 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 still trying to get all the paperwork together. And as soon as that uh, soon as that uh, gets completed, then the idea would be, uh, you know, from a certainly from a temporary basis that we'll uh, that I my family and I hopefully will be moving to URA, uh, you know, to. Uh, basically coordinate the events of the restart of the, the Revenue Virginia Spine. And that's the purpose. Uh, and we hadn't spoke about this in our last two interviews, but the purpose is so that you could be on site, not uh, doing it at a distance from Vancouver to ensure that all the, the cost savings measures and everything that needs to be done will be done in order to bring the mine into production. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it is that, you know, you want to be, you're spending 30 million bucks. You, 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 you want to be there to see how it's being spent, in my opinion. You know, I've got close on 50 years of experience in the mining business. And I think I could uh, certainly help out a little bit in terms of uh, how best to uh, use that money to get itself all back up and running again. What is the sentiment uh, as a result of the virus and the different responses that governments are um, responding to this virus with? How is the sentiment near the mine, that area in the San Juan Mountains? It's It's been very, very uh, good, as a matter of fact. There's been very uh, a small amount of COVID-19 activity there. I think there was something like maybe six cases in Ure County itself. Uh, uh, the the counties are now starting to reopen again, restaurants and lodging and uh, things like that are, are reopening uh, uh, back up again. From our perspective, you know, we've taken all the necessary uh, social distancing, uh, frequent uh, cleaning of uh, surfaces, especially vehicles, uh, things like this that were, you know, we're all touching down there and whatnot. But uh, knock on wood, uh, you know, all's been uh, well for us so far and uh, we've continued to uh, to work through this and in fact hire people uh, throughout the uh, uh, throughout April and, and bring them on and start to work down there. So then you've been able to successfully screen potential mine workers and bring more people on? Yes, that's correct. Uh, we're, we're probably upwards of uh, 37 to 40 people on site right now. Um, we've been able to attract uh, some really good minor ones and minor twos and threes. Uh, and, uh, you know, we brought on some mechanical electrical people to assist with the um, 
rebuilds and the maintenance of equipment and whatnot as you start to get up to, to speed mining and whatnot uh, you know there's there's always some things that pop out of the woodwork that you hadn't thought about and certainly maintaining equipment is uh, is one thing that we've uh, you know we've um, uh, got to do a little bit better at uh, it's uh, but it's pretty normal for this type of a, of a startup so we've had to bring these people on uh, for the most part they've all been budgeted and uh, so we uh, we're, we're making good progress there. Mm -hmm. One thing we haven't talked about in our previous interview that much is uh, Brian Briggs, your chief operations officer, I, I believe six generations from this area of the country. And he's been working on this mine for, is it about four years already? Yeah, Brian has been here uh, since uh, the, uh, the fund, uh, Alaska Resource Capital Fund foreclosed on the, uh, the asset itself. And uh, Brian came in with them to help out uh, you know, doing preliminary economic assessment, uh, doing a pre-fees, a feasibility, updating the feasibility. Brian is uh, Brian and, and his family has been there for six generations. Uh, they've uh, over the over those generations, there's been a number of his family that's worked at this mine, as a matter of fact, and other mines in in the San Juan Mountains. So uh, yeah, it, he's got quite a legacy there, and and he's been just a fantastic. Uh, asset to us and uh, you know getting us to where we are today so brian knows the community and that mine in particular very well and then you recently brought on a general manager which has about four decades of experience working on narrow vein mines like this yeah mike lee uh, joined us in uh, i think it was late uh, um, january and mike brings a wealth of narrow vein uh, experience uh, to us uh, you know which uh, is going to prove uh, invaluable uh, on the startup and go forward kind of thing. So he's Mike has been around, you know, narrow vein stuff like up in Idaho, uh, Lucky Friday, Sarco, uh, Coeur d'Alene, uh, Galena Mine, these these kinds of places. So, uh, and in addition to that, he's got quite a following of uh, of miners, as, as typical in the industry. They, uh, you know, over those years, uh, you you develop a, a group of people that that like to. Uh, follow you into new places and, and things like that. So that's proving to be very be beneficial to us as well. But, you know, uh, Mike, Mike brings uh, just a wealth of experience that uh, is going to uh, help make us successful down there. And one of your recent press releases also seemed to indicate that you beefed up the te technical focus and expertise on your board with the hire of uh, Peter Fairfield. Yes, Peter Fairfield is uh, ex-SRK. Uh, uh, Peter brings just, the, uh, again, a wealth of technical experience and practical experience he's been general manager you know at uh, at mines in australia and around the world uh so uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, getting into site and reviewing some of the things and whatnot that we're doing and uh, hopefully at some point in time when we're able to get uh, back to traveling again but uh yeah we're, we're pretty excited about having uh, peter join the board i i think he's going to be a huge benefit certainly to me uh, and to the rest of the board and to management in general. What more can you share with us about the specifics of how you've been able to still progress the mine development during this crisis? Well, you know, we've, we've, uh, as you know, in the press releases that have been put out, we've uh, on the 2000 level, which is our main haulage level, we've completed all of the, uh, the track, the switching, the rehabilitation, all that's done. Uh, we've uh, now completed uh, 320 feet of development that's uh, required to uh, position us to get in, a, in a, uh, a location where we can start driving our raises vertically. Uh, it was uh, last week we started uh, driving the vertical raises, so we're, we're now um, on our way up to the 1500 and, and beyond kind of thing, which is uh, very exciting to be able to get there. Uh, you know, we're, we're very close to being um, uh, in, in terms of the uh, development itself versus at the budget, we're, we're close to being uh, where we should be. Uh, so, so, so far things are going very well. Uh, we, we have run into a couple of issues, uh, you know, with uh, equipment maintenance, but uh, we've now got most of our equipment rebuilt. What's not rebuilt is out for rebuild or re repairing it ourselves. And that's one of the big keys to uh, improving productivity is getting our equipment in, in, uh, in good shape. So we're, we're pretty much there. Um, very excited that, uh, you know, we're, we're off and running here. So, um, yeah, uh, all good so far. So good. Mm -hmm. And you, you had a press release indicating you acquired the bluegrass claim. And so for investors listening to us, does that mean more potential upside, essentially? Absolutely. Bluegrass was a was a, a break in our ownership of the Virginia's vein. It was 1,500 feet that we, we didn't own. We owned, you know, 
to the south of that and to the north of that, but we didn't own that. Now, the bluegrass claim is contiguous to the Mahogna Gila. And as you know, anybody who's looked at our feasibility study and our, our tons and grades and whatnot, the Mahogna Gila is a very high grade area. And now with the bluegrass, of course, uh, being directly next to that, we, uh, we, we, we don't suspect, we, there, there are assays and samples that have been taken over the years by others, uh, historic uh, uh, assays that have come out of the bluegrass area that suggest that it could be very high grade, similar to the, uh, to the Mahogna Gila. So, you know, this may be a game changer for us in terms of where we go next. Uh, we, of course, have to do, uh, we have to do the homework, we have to do the drilling, we have to do the exploration to prove that because you don't want to be going out and, and doing crazy things, uh, you know, without, without having a good foundation for that. And that's not what we do. So come this summer, and uh, we're, we're thinking that we may be able to move uh, the drill program that we talked about in our previous press releases, uh, typically up in the Governor Basin area, the snows and whatnot take uh, probably into July before you can actually get in there to drill. But from the looks of things down at the site, what the guys are telling me is that uh, we may be able to get in there in June, uh, which means that we may uh, you know, get that drill program on the bluegrass going sooner than we anticipated. So uh, that's a little bit of a... Uh, good news for us uh, in, in terms of that. But, you know, we got high hopes for the bluegrass claim, to be honest with you. You raised two and a half million about a month ago. Uh, you announced that on April 17th. You also, with the share price performing so well, it's hit the high of, I believe, like 67 cents Canadian, but you have warrants that are exercisable at about 37 and a half. So have you had any warrant money come in recently? Yes. Uh, you know, last week, uh, the, we, we certainly had a flurry of, uh, of warrants coming in. Uh, so that's a, a nice surprise as well. So um, and and we may get more, you know, certainly coming in in the in the foreseeable future as we uh, see our stock price, you know, stay in the, that sixty cent range, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get it up higher than that. The mine, of course, is fully permitted. So when investors, particularly cautious investors, are looking at Arcana, one of the questions they ask is, "I want to see the debt facility and the terms." before I invest, but now your share price is two and a half, three times what it was when we first started featuring your company this year. But what can you share about the debt facility publicly? I know you haven't made the press release yet, but any developments you can share with us? You know, I, I really can't say a whole lot about it other than what I've said in the past, Bill, uh, that we are working with a number of different groups that um, uh, we're, we're progressing with the debt facility. These things take time. The COVID-19 pandemic certainly you know, cramped our, our timeline on that um, and continues to, uh, you know, play havoc with uh, being able to get due diligence, site due diligence completed. Uh, but, but we're hopeful now that with the counties and, you know, Colorado and the U.S. opening up that we're going to be able to get, um, you know, the required uh, uh, engineering disciplines from, from the bankers, essentially, to sites so we can complete the final due diligence of this, uh, of our... You know, uh, people that are interested in funding us here. But, uh, you know, it's positive, I, I guess is what I can say at this stage of the game. Uh, we're, we're very positive and, uh, you know, we, we think we're on the road to uh, getting that facility in place in, in the near future. And you said in our last interview that if it's in place by the end of June, we should still be on track for production this year. Is that still a positive statement? Yeah, that that's where we'd be shooting certainly to be in production, uh, you know, in early January, put it that way, I guess. Uh, you know, we've always said we're seven months to production. So if you, if you uh, if we're funded in June, uh, that would put us in uh, in in January uh, for production. So and then you know two months later, positive cash flow. So that's still the plan, and uh, you know we haven't deviated from that. We're, right now, we're in the process of uh, doing an internal update. You know, it's been two, 2018 since we did the updated feasibility study. Uh, so we're in uh, most of that work is, is done already. We're, we're just getting ourselves in a position to review the work that's been done. But we've gone out and uh, rebid, uh, you know, major contracts, things like that, updated unit costs. And, uh, you know, I looked at relook at the mine plan and, and the work that we've done so far 
those kinds of things. So uh, we've been doing a lot of work in uh, in the background here in, in preparation to get ourselves, uh, once we're funded, to get ourselves going quickly. One more question on the debt facility. Is it fair to say that you have multiple interested parties that you can uh, negotiate and talk to regarding who you move, fo- move forward with? That's correct. Yeah, that's that's probably the the best way to answer that. (laughs) Okay. So what more should we know about at this point in time? Uh, I know there are investors, as I kind of indicated with my way I phrased that question, are interested and want to see the terms of the debt facility. But what more should investors who are looking and checking out the company know right now? Well, I I think, you know, we've we've done a lot of work lately, uh, you know, working with you and and, uh, some other people in trying to get the message out about Orcana, about the Revenue Virginia's mind that, you know, this is a quality asset that it does have significant upside potential, that it's going to be around a very long time. It's very high grade. Uh, and with that little push that we've recently got in the price of silver, uh, you know, people have started to take a, uh, a, a deeper look, I think, at uh, what's out there for, uh, you know, silver uh, companies that could benefit from, uh, you know, the, the current situation and whatnot that we're in. So I, I think... Uh, uh, we're, we're starting to see, I, b- I believe we're starting to see another type of investor coming in, more generalist, uh, uh, coming into Orcana. And, uh, you know, ho- hopefully that will continue here in, in, the, in, in the next little while. There's been many things that uh, we each of us individually have been disappointed uh, re- with regarding the restrictions and so forth that governments have uh, placed because of the COVID-19. I was uh, very disappointed about my son's little league being canceled, but on a professional level, I was most uh, most disappointed in not being able to go out and see the mine in April. However, I still have intention to get out there this summer. And for those of you that have been paying attention to this story through this show, I mentioned the plan was to get out there in early April. Well, for obvious reasons, we couldn't do that. But I still plan to get out there and hope to have a site tour video up sometime this summer. And I hope to see you there as well, Kevin, and hopefully that your family can get down there pretty soon. Yeah, well, we're, well, we're certainly looking forward to getting there. And uh, we're going to do it uh, and get there just as soon as we possibly can, that's for sure. So it should be getting exciting, Bill, from here on in. Uh, as we get uh, you know closer, we get our, our funding in place, and uh, you know then then it will be nothing more important than doing what we do, get that execution plan going, and uh, and get us up and running. Excellent. The ticker again is A U N in Toronto and A U N F F in New York. Kevin, thanks for coming on today's show and providing an update. Thanks, Bill. All the best. 